One of the things that I'm often working with students is impact. Impact is arguably the area that is the biggest difference between good and bad golfers. And in particular, what I mean by impact is, is not just exactly what it looks like when you hit the golf ball, but I'm going, to kind of sh I'm going to talk about impact as in how the hands are moving coming in towards that sort of transitional to pre-impact position. So the big difference is, is that when you look at a tour professional at pre-impact, so this basically, again, just to clarify means should we say roughly when the club shaft is parallel, is that the hands are located over the ball. And what we see with most amateur golfers is that the hands are considerably wider at this point in time. Now, what this basically means is when an amateur is sort of hitting the golf ball, they're always sort of getting used to sort of squaring the club face by kind of, if you like, sort of scooping, right? Which is kind of like this. And what the Tor Pro is doing is that they're learning how to square the club face with much more of a rolling action of the arms. Now. The, the thing when the golfers will, mm -hmm. there are different ways of interpreting release and for some golfers they're just like the simplicity of, of getting the feeling of X, Y, Z and that's fine. But you know what I'm trying to say is fundamentally when we look at tour pros and you look at them at the very pre-impact position when the hands are ahead of the ball here, the thing that squares the club face is the lead hand that rotates like so. And that's why when you look at a tour pro pre-impact, like where I am in this area, that the lead hand would still be facing towards you know you guys, the camera, and then at this post-impact position, that's a lot of arm rotation that happens in this late portion of the golf swing. So that's what has to happen. And that's what I always try and educate students. It's like, look, if, if you're somebody who has too much of a wide impact position and you're gonna try and get your hands more over the ball, that's fine. But what you also have to understand is that you're gonna to have to increase your awareness of closing the face when you do that. But yes, of course, although it might not feel like it, that's gonna give you more stability and control of the club face than trying to do something like this. Because when you sort of straighten this arm too soon, you're gonna lose that things like your attack angle and the club face is gonna have no stability. So when you talk about it like that though, it seems quite complicated and people are like, oh. So what I would then do is I'd get them doing just something like a quite simple baseball exercise. Now, the idea in the baseball exercise is you imagine you did this in the mirror at home so you can see your reflection and what you want to focus on is your lead shoulder as reference to your low point. So this basically means by the time you get to your uh, in the mirror you'll, you can see the club head and your hands are aligned towards your lead shoulder, that's your point of reference. And what you're trying to achieve at that moment in time is, well this, it's, you've got to get your hands on the angle of your shoulder in the mirror, so similar to what I'm trying to do, direct you guys, and then what you've also got to make sure is that the club face is square to your intended target at that point in time. And, and if you do that type of exercise, what you'll notice is that you, well, you, you wouldn't do this, okay? You would obviously do this, okay? Which is my hands are leading, so my hands get to the shoulder first, and then you'll notice the way the club gets rotated around very late. And I would say, first of all, that 90% of golfers get that drill wrong, okay? So what they do in knowing is they still do this type of motion. But what I'm saying is when you do it slowly, you'll kind of understand, oh yeah, okay, that's the type of feeling. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. And when you sort of then think about throwing a ball, you would kind of do, or skimming a stone, you kind of do a similar action in terms of you would lead this way and then this would square it up much later. And, and that's why I love this drill in its pure simplicity. And that's why, I love, you know, like the smash bag, the impact bag, those sort of exercises are fantastic because you've got this massive object that you're gonna hit. You're not gonna hit that massive object this way. You're gonna hit through the object much more. So the question would be, based on this knowledge, where does that lend yourself with the grip? Well, look, what I try to do on this channel is I'm trying to educate golfers as best as I possibly can because these are the common sort of mistakes that I see all the time. And what I'm basically saying is, most amateur golfers don't understand the release correctly. And what they end up doing is you end up squaring the club face by doing indifferent things. So again, go back to the beginning of this session, I would see golfers hit the ball with a sort of scooping action like so. And instead of resolving that problem, by practicing a good direction of the hands coming into the downswing and the correct release, what you tend to do is you tend to just sort of bypass that and do things like close the face at address a little bit, okay, which is a common thing that I tend to see. Well, the other common problem that I tend to see is golfers uh, grip it and they change the thumb location. So if your thumb starts to live too much down the trail side of the club, opposable thumbs are strong and it will start to shut the face. But the problem you're gonna have is if you're shutting the face at address, okay, that's gonna, you know, that's going to feel obviously better when you hit it because you're going to hit it with a square face. But what I'm trying to say is it's, you're never going to change the actual conditions of the hit. So the point of this video is really to highlight that, yes, what you are trying to do when you grip the golf club 
grip the club in the fingers, get your, on your lead hand, put your thumb down the trail side of the club, and then when you put your trail hand on the club, put your uh, thumb down the lead side. So your thumbs are always working opposable. And the reason for this is because opposable thumbs are strong, and you wanna learn to square the face by rolling the arm, yeah, coming in towards the sort of late impact area, not doing it with your thumbs, okay? And the way I would then educate you guys is to do the drill that I've just described. Okay, do things like that first. Go and practice doing a smash bag and understand that you've got to get the hands forward, but then you have to allow a late amount of rotation to square the face. And that's exactly what the tour pros do, whether it looks like it or not. So practice that. Try not to cheat by changing thumbs and changing wrist conditions at the beginning, because I see that all the time and it just complicates things further. Welcome it, and I'll see you guys again really soon.